Okay, so we've reached a point with agents now and agent frameworks where we're starting to see a level of maturity come through not only the frameworks, but also the protocols that are out there. So last November, we saw Anthropic release the model context protocol, which has been adopted very widely for tools, prompting, and data use. And also in April, we saw Google roll out the agent to agent protocol for creating environments where you could have one agent talk to another agent that's not your agent and be able to work together and get things done. And while this hasn't been adopted as widely as MCP, definitely a lot of people are starting to use it. We see that Microsoft has started to use it for a number of different things. And even a lot of the uh, agentic frameworks are starting to use it. Here, this is Pydantic AI has got an implementation for using it. Obviously, ADK from Google is using it. And that leads us to the one thing that's been missing up until now is the whole area of money. And how are people going to deal with agents making payments on your behalf, agents collecting money if you're a merchant, and even in the future, this whole idea of having sort of agent app stores where your agent can basically ping another agent, negotiate a price for something, get some work done, get the response back from that. Okay, so today Google's rolling out the agent payments protocol. So this is basically a protocol that's going to be specifically for payments and for handling financial interactions between agents. And there are a number of different use cases that you can imagine this being used. So one of the first ways that Google's proposed that this is being used is for sort of where you want an agent to be able to go and stand in line for you to go and buy tickets or something. So imagine you've got a Taylor Swift concert coming up, tickets are going on sale at a certain time of day, you want your agent to be able to just stay online and the moment the tickets become available, it can reserve some tickets for you. It can then pay for those tickets as well. Another use case for this is the whole idea of just finding something that you want to buy. Imagine that you see a piece of clothing, you screenshot it, you give it to an agent, it works out what that brand is and then goes off on the web and scours for where is that available? What's the price for that? And if you've given it a budget of like, okay, if this is less than $30, automatically buy this for me and get it sent to my house. Another use case that they propose is the whole idea of sort of repetitive purchases. So for me, this one makes a lot of sense when you combine this with some kind of triggered agent. So if you've got agents sitting there noticing that you haven't taken your supplements for two days because they've run out, it can automatically just go online to the place where you've bought this before or perhaps even shop around and then handle the transaction and go through that. And you can also imagine having agents that are looking for things that you're interested in, but only when they are on sale or only when they're heavily discounted, etc. So you can imagine giving agents the ability to buy things is going to cause issues for the different players in the game here. So you've got concerns from merchants where they want to control the customer. They want to be able to upsell you. They want to be able to enroll you in some kind of loyalty program. And then you've even got things like the payment ecosystem where they're going to be very concerned around people impersonating you or agents impersonating your agents, etc. There's a whole bunch of issues there around sort of risk and fraud and issues around who is actually liable if something goes wrong in these situations. So Google's definitely approaching this, taking into account both the merchant ecosystem and the payments ecosystem. They're focused on, on trying to build this so that merchants can still interact with your agent and do things like display offers to your agent, like suggest loyalty programs for extra discounts, that kind of thing. But they also want to make sure on the payment side that the identity of your agent is going to be tied to you. So looking at how they're doing this, they're actually making this A2P an extension on top of both the A2A protocol and the MCP protocol in here. And the goals with this extension is to basically establish trust between your agent and merchants and payments. Also to be able to provide visibility into anything where agents are initiating payments. It's going to handle your payment credentials, your identity and things like that. And the goal here is to basically have a system that makes it 100% clear that the intent 
of the user is being expressed by the actual agent. So a key part of that is going to be a set of roles and responsibilities that your agent must conform to, how it will deal with credentials providers to get an identity to actually give to a merchant endpoint. And then it will be up to them to then basically give that identity to the payment processor who will check these payment credentials as you go through. Currently, they're provisioning this for two kinds of uses, human present and human not present. So the idea of the human present thing is that you have the agent go off, find whatever it is that you want, bring all this sort of decision back to you, show you perhaps the shopping cart, and then you're the one who actually clicks the buy now button or clicks the submit to go ahead with the transaction. So this is what they're calling human present. The second type is obviously going to be probably a little bit more risky is human not present. And here they talk a lot about this cryptographically signed intent mandate where they have to be totally sure that you've empowered the agent to go and buy this specific kind of product from this kind of merchant. So it's going to be very interesting to see how this actually plays out, how difficult it's going to be to set up agents to do this. But it's good to see that Google is actually publishing this, making it fully open. I think they've already donated A2A to the Linux Foundation. I'm not sure if this is going to be eventually given to the Linux Foundation as well. But the idea of putting this out there is going to give people a path to actually creating agents that can buy and sell things. So they've also published some core principles around this of being open, of it being a non-proprietary open extension. They also seem to be heavily pushing the whole concept of that this should protect user privacy by design. And also this whole sort of idea of defined liability. So it's very clear who is going to be responsible if a transaction goes wrong in a certain way. So you can imagine that's going to be something very interesting to see for people to actually then start using this kind of protocol, giving the agent your credit card and giving it away to actually make payments and stuff going forward. It's very interesting also the concept that they talk about verifiable intent, not inferred action. So they talk about that any sort of trust cannot be based on just an ambiguous response from an LLM, that these transactions need to be anchored and they need to be deterministic and that there needs to be a cryptographical proof of intent from all parties here. So that I think is going to be really interesting to see how that actually plays out and how hard is that going to actually be to implement into your agent. If you want to make an agent that is a travel agent and goes off and allows people to book flights when they're cheap, it's probably going to be reasonably easy if you've got the human clicking the order button right at the last step. But if you've got something that is making transactions on behalf of someone else and doing that while they're asleep, I'm very curious to see, okay, how hard is that going to be to actually set up? And of course, I think this is just the precursor to we actually see agent app stores where people will actually be able to contact an agent to perform a task for us and be able to get the response back. Now, unfortunately, Google doesn't seem to be talking about this. This is more sort of an e-commerce play at the moment. But I do think at some point we're going to see agents be able to farm tasks out to agents that are much more specialized for certain kinds of tasks and to be able to pay a few cents here, a few cents there for that kind of thing. So if you want to get started, you can come to the AP2 website. I've put the link in the description. This will basically give you a bunch of information of how you can get started. Some of the things that I talked about in the video. You could also go to GitHub where they've not only got docs for all of this, but they've got sample examples. So some of these are using the Python implementation of this. And I think over time, just like with A2A, they're going to add more examples of sample code here as well. And as other frameworks start to adopt this, you'll probably see links to those here as well. So this is literally just the first 0.1 release here. My guess is you'll see a lot of updates. And I know from talking to the team, one of the big things that they want is to hear from people. How would people like to see this extended even more? So come in here and check out the roadmap and please feel free to basically give feedback on how this could be improved. So just to finish up, for me personally, I'd love to hear what are your use cases for using something like this? What kind of agents do you see as being the main users? 
of these protocols going forward. I'd love to hear in the comments what your thoughts are about this. And as always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.